Hey, what's up? Hello. I hope you all are doing well. It is the end of the second quarter of the year, or at least it was a few weeks ago. And so today I am going to just wrap up all of the books that I read between April, May, and June. And as I predicted in my last video where I had 20 something, I have far fewer this time around as expected only six, but let's get started. So firstly is The Importance of Being Seven by Alexander McCall Smith. This is, uh, I believe the sixth, seventh, seventh book in the 44 Scotland Street series. Uh, and so I've been reading this sort of 12, 13 book series across the year now. Uh, and this one had some interesting developments in it. Not that they all don't have that. Uh, but this one had some very exciting things that I had predicted and I was happy to see came true. Uh, and so I really enjoyed this one. It's just, you know, it's another one in the series. They're all really quite delightful. Uh, having lived in Scotland, they are very sort of nostalgic for me to like think about the places that I've walked before, uh, even though I didn't live there all that long. Uh, but really great book, lovely series. Uh, if you're interested in that sort of serial style writing and like gossipy uh, idea of back and forth with some really, really compelling, adorable characters. Also in April, I read a book called Eminent Hipsters, which was written by Donald Fagan. You may know him better uh, as one of the two main members uh, and founders of Steely Dan, the band from the 1970s. I have listened to this music uh, because of my father for most of my growing up life and now listen to it my, myself uh, without him sometimes and I just was really interested in what Donald Fagan had to say outside of his musical work. Um, my dad has this book and he told me it was good and so I gave it a try. Uh, he is definitely Donald Fagan, a, a cranky old guy and I don't think he would be upset to hear me say that. Uh, but I enjoyed his perspective. I sort of enjoyed his musings on how he came to making the kind of music that he does and like the, the whole very outpouring of self-sacrifice and depression that went into his music that he did with Walter Becker uh, and how much he has produced outside of Steely Dan and I would be very much interested in uh, meeting him should I ever run across him. So if that is your sort of thing, um, definitely have a look at this book. There are some reviews that I've seen of it that are like, oh my god, don't meet your heroes. This is not this is not great. It's just Donald Fagan complaining. I mean, a little bit, but that's kind of to be expected in a way. Like, give a man a break. We all complain. Moving on. In May, I read a book called Trust Exercise, uh, which I've also reviewed, and you can check that out if you want to. This follows a group of high school students in the 1980s, uh, and the way that this is set up, it's sort of the same book three times over, for, I, I want to say from three different perspectives, if you will, and I don't want to say too much about it just because of the unique way that it's written it makes it really interesting uh, to go into with fresh eyes. So if you like that kind of thing, you like a non-traditional narrative, this is totally the book for you. I enjoyed this book. I was not prepared for some of the triggery stuff that I felt should I should have or like could have looked up uh, before I started to read it. There is a lot that happens in here, even though sometimes it doesn't feel like very much happens um, because you're getting the same story three times over. But definitely check it out if, if non-traditional narrative is what you like to read. For the book club that I lead a few months ago, we read a book called The Un-Americans by Molly Antipal. And this is a collection of short stories. The group was not super thrilled about having to read short stories, but I think ultimately we came away with one in there that everybody kind of either got attached to or enjoyed or found something in. Uh, I think I had one member of the group tell me that this was a deep look into the pain of the human condition. And while that might be a little dramatic, uh, this book definitely explores some very strong Jewish cultural themes uh, and sort of the, the plight of that group of people in a variety of different perspectives from across the globe and from across a lot of um, male, female, young, old, viewpoints. Uh, so it's a it's a really interesting collection. Uh, the writing is, I don't want to say stark, uh, but it's it's a little bit blank in some places. It's very it's very 
curious. It's a curious way uh, to write. So if short stories are your thing, I would recommend this. Also, if you're doing any kind of reading challenge and you need a collection of short stories, this one is not particularly long. So it would fit right into any sort of plans that you have to read a short book of short stories. And then we come into June. Uh, the next book that we read with my book club is Elaine Castillo's America is Not the Heart. I really enjoyed this book. It is a heavy and dense and packed uh, look through the Filipino American immigrant experience and it takes place very much in California from some shifting perspectives in one main character's mind. I'm going to do a review of this book because there's a lot to unpack. Uh, it's written in English with a lot of different languages tossed in there um, and it was just a really wonderful exploration of this one woman's life and her struggle and also getting sort of everyone else's struggles at the same time and seeing how it all worked together and that generational motivation uh, that was behind this family and some other families that do come together in the book. Um, this was a book that I had heard about from the New York Public Library's podcast The Librarian Is In. Uh, they did an entire episode on it and that really inspired me to read it. It is just as good as I anticipated uh, and I will have a review as I said coming soon because there's a lot to unpack. And then lastly, I went up to visit my parents and I brought this book with me. This is Sarah Dessen's new book called The Rest of the Story. Uh, it was, it was, it was cute. Uh, if you followed us for a really long time, you'll know that I read The Truth About Forever every single year, uh, just because that was a, a book that meant so much to me as a very young person. And uh, I read all of the work that Sarah Dessen produces. And this one was lovely. It really fit into all of the same themes. I thought the, the naming piece was interesting. If you've read the book, you'll know what I mean. Uh, that was a really sort of very stark, explicit way uh, to, to show a difference in understanding in sides of the family. And it was just, it was very cute like all of her work. Very cute. Um, I, I love to always look for the Easter eggs. I caught uh, one or two of them and that was a very nice time. It was just a very nice easy read for the summer while I sat on the back porch at my parents' house. And if you like contemporary YA and you haven't read this, I don't know why not just lovely as always. So that's all there is to say, only a fraction of the books that I read in the first quarter because as I mentioned I did get very busy with a lot of new work uh, that I'm doing and I just don't have all the time in the world but I do hope to be uh, reading more as we come into the third quarter here. I'm working on like three books at a time right now which is happening again and never works out well. If you're in a place where it's very warm right now like I am, please stay cool. I hope you're having lovely weeks and lovely lives and we will see you very soon.